Hello and welcome back to Planet 40k. So we're on our final section of the series where we're updating the Planet 40k ratings. This time we're doing the Lord of War units within the Necron Codex. Before we dive in, random shout out of the day goes to Nerd with a Bow for this comment shown here. So make sure you get in the comments below. Maybe you have some video ideas for the channel. Maybe you just want to say hi. And if you haven't already, do me a huge favour subscribing to the channel. We're putting out regular Necron content along with other 40k content. Currently we're covering Space Marines and Dark Angels. Right, so if you're not familiar with what we're doing, then maybe go check out the previous videos in this mini-series. We're simply upgrading the ratings based on the metas and the general experience of 9th edition. A lot of the reviews we've done were quite early in 9th edition before the new codexes and supplements were out. So in some cases, there was no 9th edition Drukhari or Death Guard, for example. So now that they're out, the ratings are slightly different. So Lord of War units in general really are suffering this edition simply due to the fact that you need to pay 3 command points if you're taking a super heavy auxiliary detachment and there's normally just cheaper, better alternatives within your codex. So let's begin with the first Lord of War unit, which is the Obelisk. Received a two-star rating from me back in the end of March. Starting with the good, an insane amount of wound, 28 in total. It's got a toughness value of 8, which makes it extremely difficult to deal with. On top of that, it's got a 2 plus armor save. It's then got 16 Tesla Sphere shots that are likely to get 16 hits once the exploding 6 is going into effect each at strength 7, and if you remain stationary with it, they turn into 24 shots and 2 damage a pop instead of 1. It can also deep strike if you wanted to, and it does have some anti-fly abilities as well as anti-aircraft. It can itself fly, and finally it can be repaired with the spider as it's a vehicle. As for the bad, it's extremely expensive with 3 command points to fill that super heavy auxiliary detachment and then 370 points on top of that. Now the anti-aircraft ability isn't that effective at present as aircraft in general are not that commonly used due to them being a little bit lightweight and not being able to take and hold objectives. Now in order for the weaponry to be effective it needs to remain stationary for a turn so even in turn 2 when it deep strikes in it's going to be counted as movement so you're caught between either missing 2 turns with its best profile or making the choice to deploy it from the get go. But then that brings its own problem which is the Tesla spheres are only 24 inch range so the targets may not even be in range for it. Then as it's likely going to be in that super heavy auxiliary detachment, it's not going to gain any benefits from the faction abilities, so you simply can't be putting the Mephrit Dynasty code on it to get that 3 inch extra range. It does have a degrading stat line as well which will affect the ballistic skill in particular. Then finally there's just better options in the codex, even the Annihilation Barge. Not that I rate the Annihilation Barge but you can get 3 of them for just 10 points cheaper than the Obelisk and it will save you those 3 command points. Then from the 3 barges you're going to get 30 Tesla Destructor shots and then the second weapons underneath for a total of 9 shots whether it's the Gorse Cannons or the Tesla Cannons. They combine to a total of 24 wounds which is 4 wounds less than the Obelisk but they do have Quantum Shielding and don't need to stay still. Now I'm not suggesting for one minute you go out and get 3 Annihilation Barges but my point is even some of our worst units in the Codex are better points for points than the Obelisk. So I'm dropping this as you may have suspected already. Not really due to the meta with the model itself as they've stank for some time now but with a bit more experience in 9th edition and seeing how other units are interacting with the meta as well. I actually think this is the worst unit in the codex, that's just my opinion there. So this one for me is going to be a heavy drop but I'm going to go with a 1 star rating. I'd rather field units such as the Annihilation Barges. Next we've got the Tesseract Bolt. Now we reviewed this around February time, it received a generous 3 star rating. So for the good it's got 30 wounds in total which is the most in the codex for a single model. Again it's got a 2 plus armor save and it's got a 4 plus invulnerable save so this thing's tanky as hell. It carries the same Tesla Sphere weapons, 4 of them again, although they don't hold cut when you remain stationary this time. It of course has the Catan powers which are a beautiful thing for Necron players in general. If you haven't fielded a Catan yet, try one, they are magic. The three named Catan shards all have their own niches, I prefer the Nightbringer personally, I just think that model's pretty cool. But yeah, this model does have those Catan Pals as well. It can also fly, it can be healed with a spider as it's a vehicle. Then on to the bad, 500 points and 3 command points which I think is ridiculous. Even 500 points on his own I think is insane. It's the most expensive unit in the codex and you'll not be getting your points back from it. The range attacks are very poor, okay it is strength 7 but there's no AP and single damage so against units with a decent armour it's minimal. Against weaker cheaper units it is removing models but those are maybe toughness 4 at best so you don't need strength 7 to do the job. Again no faction abilities from the dynasty as you're likely using the super heavy auxiliary again. It's only toughness 7 not toughness 8 like the obelisk and it has a degrading stat line which will affect the ballistic skill in particular. So for me another dropper. I don't think it's as awful as the obelisk but I think it is down there. Yes Catan Pals are great and this thing can survive for the majority of the game but personally I'd never field it competitively. So I'm going to be pushing this one down to a 2 star rating. Next in the list is the monolith. 
Damn, I love this model. Reviewed around Christmas time last year, so received a three star rating. So for the good, we've got 24 wounds, it's got a two plus armor save, toughness eight, all the good tanky stuff there. It's got decent weaponry, either the four gorse flux arcs, which are rapid fire, so you can be shooting out 24 shots at strength five, minus two AP one damage which is much better than those Tesla Spheres in the previous unit because they're still wounded infantry on threes. Or you can chop them out for the four Death Rays, which are strength nine, minus three AP, and the damage is D3 plus three. Only four shots, but you'd expect one or two to go through. And that damage is pretty reliable. It then has the Particle Whip, which again is a minus three AP, and the damage is three. To further add to its arsenal, it's got the Portal of Exile, which is a strength eight, minus three AP, and three damage, and it auto hits in combat. Bear in mind this thing has six attacks, so in combat it's actually a beast. Six strength eight auto hitting attacks. It kind of makes me want to go and buy one, if I'm honest. It deep strikes in, although you will miss a turn of shooting. It also summons core units into play from reserves, and the units coming in won't need to be more than nine inches away from enemy models. The monolith needs to remain stationary to use this, so you can't deep strike in and use it in the same phase, unless you use the stratagem that costs one command point. Not a bad option, but now you're three command points down. Just to field the monolith, you need to spend more command points to put units in reserves, and then another command point to get them out of reserves. So maybe you're looking at four or five command points in total. You could use the stratagem to pick them up off the table and put them anywhere on the board more than nine inches away, but again, that's more command points. It is a very good model to hide units out of line of sight, which is pretty solid. It can fly, and finally, it's a vehicle so it can be repaired with a Canoptic Spider. As for the bad, another expensive model, 360 points. Similar prices to Catan Shards to be fair, except you're paying three command points on top for the detachment. It's not likely gaining any Dynasty buffs. Now with all the Lord of War models mentioned so far, you can access the buffs if you take a super heavy detachment as opposed to a super heavy auxiliary detachment. The auxiliary detachment is for one single Lord of War and it states that they do not gain benefits, but the larger detachment that is three of them, they can gain benefits, but that's gonna be 900 plus points to field. So unless you're playing one of those big mega games, it's very unlikely that you're doing it. Unfortunately, the monolith isn't likely to make its points back. If it does catch, say, a unit of Terminators in combat and remove them off the board, then ping off a few models here and there, that's not too bad, it's probably the best case scenario though. Finally, it does have a degrading stat line which will affect the ballistic skill in particular, which sucks for your death rays. So I'm going to push this down to a 2.5 star. I would love it to remain at a 3 star, but I just can't warrant it. Out of all the options I've mentioned so far, this for me has been the best one. Until we get to the next one of course. So the final option here is the Silent King. So we reviewed this in January and we slapped a 5 star rating on him. So let's start with the good, there's a lot of good here. It goes in a supreme command detachment so it's not going to cost you any command points. 16 wounds for the model alone, then add 10 more wounds for the sidekicks following him, so a beefy total of 26 wounds. His maneers are used for the lookout sir buff, so he can't be hit until they both go down. All models in that unit have a 4 plus in one save. And then between the three of them, they've got a crazy amount of weaponry. They've got two strength 12 beams that are a flat six damage apiece. The Scepter of Eternal Glory, which is three strength eight attacks at range, all used as a strength nine melee weapon. The Scythe of Dust, which is a strength eight melee weapon with the four extra attacks. Or the Staff of Stars, which is nine strength six shots at range or a strength five melee weapon, which is three extra attacks. He's then got all the Overlord buffs like Relentless March and My Will Be Done and it can be used twice because he's a fair run, and he can be using those abilities on Triot Praetorians, which is magic. He can deny the witch, he always fights first in melee, he grants rerolls to wound in melee for core units and Praetorians, he grants rerolls to hit rolls at range for core units and Praetorians again, so some real good synergy for those Praetorians in general. So instead of losing CP like the other Lord of War models, the Silent King actually grants you three command points for fielding him, which is also pretty good. He can use the voice of the Triarch to manipulate the command protocols. He can fly. Again, he's a vehicle, so spiders can heal him D3 wounds per turn. Now, something I am still unsure of, I think I know the answer, but let me know in the comments. He's a dynastic agent, which doesn't allow you to select the dynasty code for him, but he's already got the Zalkan dynasty built in, so does he get the buffs or not? I think he does, but let me know below. I'm still not quite sure on that one. Either way, you can be taking him and using a totally different dynasty for the rest of your army because he buffs core units and Praetorians, not core dynasty units. So let's talk about some of the bad. 450 points is a hefty investment. He's not guaranteed to make his points back up, but he's definitely a huge threat. His stats do degrade, although it isn't affected the ballistic skill and weapon skill, just the movements and attacks. However, you do lose weapons on the way. He's not toughness 8, he's only toughness 7 unfortunately, and he's only got a 3 plus armor save. I would like to have seen at least one of those stats increased at 450 points. Other than that, I don't really see too many issues. I think I'm going to stick to the 5 star. The pros massively outweigh the cons here, 
and he's less than 100 points more than a Catan Shard, but you're getting a hell of a lot more for it. Guys, that's the Lord of War models all wrapped up, and in fact, that's all of the units in the Codex updated. Shortly, there should be some chapter approved point changes, so we will cover the changes and amend if needed. Next, from the Necron side of things of the channel, we're going to look at how to beat certain factions with Necrons, so keep your eyes open for that. I'm not really looking forward to the Drukari video, as like most people, I am stumped at the moment, but I will come up with something. So in the meantime, some if you're new, like the video on your exits, thank you all for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.